Who are you? I'm Jeremy Till. I used to be an architect. I still write. And I'm Henderson St. Martins. What is architecture? It depends. Architecture is written as a history of a certain set of values. And that is so perpetuated and so strong that it's very difficult to escape that architecture is simply the production of buildings. And therefore, architecture as a culture in some way privileges the building over its occupation, the building over the processes of the production of the building, and the building over the way that it situates itself in society. So architecture becomes eventually described through the history of buildings as static objects. And that's where the problem starts. Would you describe architecture as a profession or a discipline? That's a really good question because it, as a profession, it, it circumscribes itself as a set of professional values to do with knowledge. I have the knowledge, which you don't. You're a dirty amateur. I'm an architect. I know the way forward. The knowledge is then played out through issues of aesthetics and technique, which architects can control, and therefore it becomes circumscribed by professional values. The issue then becomes that those values are played out through the discipline of architecture. So discipline is a form of, well, it can be a form of punishment, but let's just say discipline as, as a mode of operation. The trouble is that the, the values of the profession are then played out through the dis discipline. Whereas I think that if you start with the discipline as not in terms of punishment, but in terms of a set of behaviours, then you can think outside professional boundaries. Is the UK a leader in architectural education? No. No. How introverted then do you think architectural education is in this country? I think architecture education is introverted in as much as it's not this country that's a problem, it's architecture education as a whole. It's introverted because it, it looks to itself the whole time. And therefore it looks to a certain set of models. And the model that is still being looked at is 1978 in the AA, the glory days of Zaha, Peter Cook and Kuhaus, still seen as the model which, which architecture education should be based on because it produced Zaha, then Kuhaus, Peter Cook. That's jolly good, isn't it? And so that sort of AA unit system played out throughout the country as a model in which we can recreate that golden age. It's quite extraordinary, isn't it? That was 35 years ago. And so there's not very much questioning of, of new forms of architectural education. How does your everyday life affect the way you practice or the way you teach? My everyday life affects it because I live with Sarah. And Sarah, as a feminist, if you live with a feminist, then you have to understand a whole set of different value systems of to do with patriarchy, to do with oppression, to do with inequality. And so all of those in a... I can't be a, call myself a feminist because I think feminism is, is defined through the personal and therefore one's own experience of the world. But I can completely appreciate and actually play out a feminist discourse. How do you think we should try and attack this issue and try and rebalance the gender issue in architecture? I think you have to start right at the beginning. That it can start in education, which is beginning to happen through more female teachers, certainly more female students, but I've still, still is pretty much held by patriarchal systems. In, you know, in the whole country, there are 15 female professors or something. Six are in one school, which is Sheffield, which is a feminist school, which is fantastic. But you know, that's not many female professors left in the rest of the country. So that it has to start there, but it also has to start mainly. I mean, the, the trouble with architecture is that they, it thinks it's a liberal profession, and therefore, it, yeah, dear, no, we're not sexist at all, but actually, in all the way that it operates, is deeply, deeply aggressive to women. The long hours, the kind of soft sexism of 
you know, that kind of jerky sexism, all, all those patriarchal and sexist systems, I think, are embedded in architectural culture. How serious do you think the UK's current housing crisis is? Incredibly serious. It's serious because it's fueled by the market rather than by a set of actually what are needed in terms of social demands. So the fact that in London 60% of new housing has been bought by overseas investors as buy to let is pretty scary. The fact that affordable housing is a graph which goes like that. The fact that the new government's proposals are just fueling a market which benefits those who have already rather than those who don't have. The fact that in London my students are being forced further and further out and there's no hope they'll ever get a part of equity in housing. I could go on and on. It's, I, if, if you could crack, interesting, if you could crack housing, I think it would bring a whole set of political change with it. Why do you think that prefab concrete social housing works in Eastern Europe but failed in the UK with Park Hill, for example? I don't think that's a question. Okay, and we'll leave it there. Thank you very much.